practice as a cooperative effort. It's true that when you meditate you're sitting here working on your mind and only you can do the work. But for you to be able to do that work requires the support of other people. The monastery we have here, the meditation hall, the huts, everything you look at, everything you can see here in the monastery is the result of someone's generosity. Which means that our practice depends on other people's generosity. And so in addition to learning to be generous ourselves as a support for one, other, one another, and as an internal support for the practice. It's also good to learn how to be the recipient of other people's generosity in an appropriate way. I knew a man in Singapore who had taken early retirement from his job so he could have more time to practice. His pension wasn't much, and he was looking after his old sick mother. And there was one time when I had been invited for a meal. He had come along. And when the meal was done and everyone had had their full, there was still a lot of food left over. So one of the women who had prepared the food set aside some for him to take home. She knew that he needed, needed to save money, and he could share the food with his mother. He refused it, though, on the grounds he didn't want to have any karmic debts. Well, that, of course, was an insult to her, that he wasn't willing to be indebted to her. So she put a curse on him. There's an important lesson to learn in that story, that as a recipient of other people's generosity, you are also being generous in a way, that you're willing to take on the debt, realizing that you owe something to them. And this doesn't mean that you have to pay them back in kind. But you do have the debt of doing the best in your practice, so that they can get the most out of the gift that they've given. The suttas list this as one of the motivations for wanting to become an arahant. As an arahant, any gift given to you would give great rewards to the person who gave it. In other words, the motivation is compassion, the motivation is generous. You hear so much Mahayana propaganda about the selfish arahant, but you can't be selfish and become an arahant. And one of the motivations for becoming an arahant is that it's good for other people. It's one thing to keep in mind. Another, though, is a comment that Mahagasapa made one time. He was looking back on his life as a monk. And he'd become an arahant seven days after his ordination. And as he said, for seven days I ate food and I was a debtor to the countryside. But from that point on I did not eat my food in debt. In other words, as long as we're not arahants, we are in debt to the people who provide us with what we need. So you want to learn how to take on that debt in good graces. Be gracious in receiving the gifts I give you, in the realization that, yes, you are incurring a debt, but it's a good debt to pay off, because the best way to pay it off is through the practice, to be a virtuous person, to develop good qualities of mind. That's how you pay them back. So when someone gives a gift, you accept it with good grace, even if it's something you can't use. Because I mean, if you can't use it, there's someone else who can. It 
if, however, you see the gift is inappropriate or that it's going to be harmful to your practice, then you can refuse the gift. But you want to do it in such a way that you're not hurting the other person's feelings. And it's an important lesson in the practice is to learn the humility of a recipient. Years back, when I was first going on my alms round, there was one couple lived in a tiny shack. They were newlyweds. That little shack was just, just big enough for two people to sleep in, with a little makes, makeshift kitchen outside. But every morning, though, they had something for my alms bowl. And to be the recipient of the generosity of a poor person, that's a really good lesson. You go back, have your meal, and then you sit and meditate and you think, okay, they gave that, they invested that in my practice. My practice better be good. So these are good things to reflect on as you meditate. Spread thoughts of goodwill to all the beings who've helped you practice. If there was any meat in your meal today, it was spread goodwill, dedicate the merit of your practice to the animals who died. Dedicate the merit of your practice to the people who gave the food, who gave the clothing, the shelter, the medicine, all the things that we have here. Because without their help, you wouldn't be here practicing. This place wouldn't be here for you to practice. I remember the way to pay back the debt is not to do special favors for the people who've given things, because that cuts into the merit of their giving. It's to be really sincere and trying to be mindful, trying to get the mind to settle down, doing the best to understand your defilements. So you can go beyond them. Because the world needs more people like that. So just as the practice is a cooperative effort, the results you gain from the practice are not just yours alone. The people around you are going to benefit. And it's in that way that you're worthy the recipient of people's generosity. So as long as you're still incurring a debt, as long as you still have to incur a debt to stick with the practice, take on that debt in good grace. and regard your ability to repay that debt as a privilege.